Hello everybody and welcome to another wonderful video on soundproofing and room acoustics. Today is part two of our two-part series on how to build a professional home recording studio in your backyard. So if you have not already watched part one, I highly recommend going back because part two won't necessarily make as much sense without watching part part one, but we'll have that in the show notes below um, and probably make like a, a little um, playlist as well for this series. Now, I want to say uh, before we dive in that for those of you who don't know, I am Wilson Harwood and I am a soundproof home recording studio designer and acoustician based in Nashville. We do home recording studios, but also just soundproof rooms in general all over the world. Um, so just letting you know that that's what we do as a design firm. And today we're going to be showing you actually the set of plans from one of our clients for a backyard professional level home recording studio that has both a control room and a live room. And we're specifically going to be going over the HVAC system today, which I know is always juicy and fun for everybody out there. And we're also going to be talking about our acoustic plan and some of the ideas I have around acoustic plans. If you haven't watched part one, it's the bulk of this information. It's a longer video. It's going to go through everything we did, going through the full set of plans up to the HVAC system. So that covers electrical, it covers walls, it covers the roof, it covers, you know, ceilings, all that fun stuff. So I highly recommend going back if you're interested in learning more about that. All right, enough of me jibber jabbering. I'm going to dive right into this lesson uh, and show you guys the HVAC system and the acoustic uh, design for this backyard home recording studio. Let's dive in. <laughs> All right, all right. So what we have here is the uh, plan view of our HVAC system. Now, if anyone's watching this right now, you're probably freaking out. For those of you on the podcast, it's just a ton of, it looks like a like an oil refinery in terms of the level of uh, turns and ducting that's going on here. But I promise I'll try to make sense of all this uh, and show you what's going on. So to do that, let's actually look at this section right here. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so we can really see it clearly here. So the heart of this system is really the Brone B210 E75RT, which is a fancy name for this AI series 210 CFM energy recovery ventilator. Uh, we design our, our rooms to have pretty high ability for CFM output, more than probably your typical home. And the reason for that is that we want 210 CFM because we could have up to like 15 people in this studio at any one time. Um, you know, think about a large recording session. You want to have the ability to provide enough fresh air for every person in the root studio. Um, the cool thing about these AI uh, Brone systems is that they're really good, first of all, but also they can they can change the the amount of CFM they're providing based on the number of people in the, in the studio. So that's pretty helpful too. Um, one of the cool things we added was the April Air E100 dehumidifier. It uh, pumps out 100 pints per day of uh, humidity. And in a place like Florida, and especially when we're including, we're pulling like hot sticky air, the ERV does a really good job of removing some of that humidity, but it doesn't do a perfect job. So I've started including for some of my higher end builds when the client can afford it, I like to do the April air um, in there as well. We run a separate duct system and a separate set of baffle boxes per room for just the dehumidifier. So it's a very, you know, it's a more, difficult system to draw up, but I think it's well worth it if you want uh, good dehumidifying. And if you need humidity, you can do the same system, just have a damper switch where you can go from the um, April Air E100 dehumidifier in the summertime to the humidifier in the wintertime. The humidifier just needs a, um, a water line. So keep that in mind. If you don't have water at your studio, that's not gonna be possible. Um, so let's go back over here to plan view and you can see our baffle boxes. So if we watch this number A here is going to be the dehumidifier and it's got its own separate loot. The red uh, ducting is going to represent the return air and the green is the supply. So we can see, we can kind of follow this. Um, some of that air is going to be going around here and it's going to be pushed back into the system. So this loop, um, I actually misspoke earlier, this loop in particular is not closed for the dehumidifier. It's actually coming back in, pumping the dehumidified air because it's so complex into um, all the rooms. So here's our supply here and our supply here. And then we have a separate return grill um, for the dehumidified air, which comes in through here. 
uh, and goes, and then we have return coming here, and then that all comes back into the dehumidifier. So this one, this baffle box here in the live room and this baffle box here in the control room are gonna be pulling air specifically just for the dehumidifier. And then we've also got a return grill here from the uh, live room and a return grill um, as well underneath. You can't see this, these are stacked on top of each other, but there's two and they're gonna be going um, back to the ERV. So pretty crazy stuff here. Um, definitely one of the, eh, definitely the most common, well, I, I mean, we have one other project that's about this complex. Um, and then we do like a whole HVAC schedule and everything to kind of show our clients and everybody exactly what you want to get by. You know, we want to make this as easy as possible for our clients as well as for the uh, contractors who are installing this. You can see just a different set of views here um, showing the section of that same ventilation system, which, like I said, looks crazy at first glance, but as you look at it, um, you know, it starts to make more sense as you go in. They do have a mini split in here, but, um, not really, uh, we're going to put that in the live room and the control room. And that shows how to install the mini split using this row flex gasket, uh, which we like to use and kind of a design for how to install the mini split so that you put the drywall on first and then, attach it later so that your HVAC installer can come in before the rest of the drywall team and kind of install everything when it's still in the rough opening mode. Whew, that's a lot of information, guys. Uh, there's a lot that goes in here. So as you can see, uh, there's a lot that goes on with these plans. All right, let's go down to this next page, which gets really fun with the HVAC system. So continuing on, we're, we're looking at this plan again and showing some three-dimensional views, which I think always gives contractors a better feel for just the space, um, especially us lay people that aren't building on looking at plans all the time. The 3D views can be really helpful. Uh, and then we have how to build the uh, baffle boxes. So this is, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I'm worried about, you know, will my contractor know how to do all this without any experience? And the truth is, yes, if they can read a set of plans, you know, we're making it super easy for them to understand exactly how to build a baffle box and like what a chimney is. And we explain all this stuff and we give you links in the plans to how to buy everything. So it's really, you know, as simple as we possibly can make it. Uh, we're trying to make it as easy as possible to to get all this information in place for you. Um, so yeah, there's our baffle box, just a general overview. Let me kind of show you guys how this all works. Um, so we've got, you know, air coming out in this case, um, and then the chimney returned to live room. So what's going on is this is a soundproof custom made box that's going to pass through our ceiling and into the drywall of the ceiling above. There's a little bit of black there that represents some neoprene foam, uh, neoprene rubber, I should say, not foam, it's not foam, it's rubber. Neoprene rubber that connects uh, our baffle box to the interior ceiling without actually sonically connecting as much as possible. So the neoprene is going to help absorb the freak, the vibrational frequencies that could be coming through this box into the ceiling. Um, and then we have the one inch, uh, acoustic second skin liner. This could be any type of acoustic duct board, but we specify right now the second skin audio duct liner, uh, cause we just think it's easy to order. Um, but you know, your HVAC team might have some one inch acoustic duct liner on hand and, and any of that would work for these types of boxes. And we also use uh, three quarter inch plywood, um, you know, to build the boxes pretty standard and build those baffles. And then we wrap it again in another layer of five eighths inch drywall, just to make sure that it's really heavy and sound can't get into our box or out of our box is the goal. Um, and then we connect a rectangular duct here. Sometimes it's a round duct. It really just depends on the design of the box and that will go, um, into our system. So pretty cool stuff. Um, basically, uh, here's some more dimensions that you guys can see. You can steal this if you want. It's all good. Um, I will caution you if you steal this design that it has been designed specifically for the CFM of this studio. So, you know, you need to kind of know what you're doing rather than just steal some designs. Uh, but yeah, that's why I'm sharing this stuff. Um, so yeah, you get down here and we see even more baffle boxes. So <laughs> kind of the same thing. And then we talk about the design with having these two baffle boxes directly on top of each other because these are the returns for one's the return for the dehumidifier and one's the return for the um to the erv so just just some really crazy stuff going on here with the hvac again more baffle box plans because we had different types 
and then uh, even more baffle box plans. They just keep going and uh, never never stop. So many. And then we get to our a, uh, chimney plans. And this shows you a little bit about how our chimneys are built. So what we do here is we wrap our chimney the same way we do our box. And actually, I like to cover the inside of this chimney with some duct sealant just so that it's sealed up. So you can paint the inside here with duct sealant. But that's just plywood. Uh, 5 8 inch drywall on the outside and then this is actually uh, we're moving to quarter inch neoprene rubber um, that we're getting from McMaster supplies um, just because we're having trouble finding pure neoprene that's not actually mixed with some other type of rubber uh, after doing a bunch of research I found that neoprene rubber is going to be the best uh, affordable option besides silomer um, for reducing vibrations so that's kind of what our chimney looks like here i'm sure you're gonna have more questions about that this is a great diagram that i love that my designer made that shows kind of how the air passes through here into the um into the room and we can see here how this is all coming through our ceiling that's the uh genie clip five uh, seven eighths inch furring channel just so you guys know that we got our mini split here fresh air coming over the mini split and then being shot into the room is the best design idea now we are finally finally guys to our uh acoustic treatments and acoustic treatment schedule so we always do a schedule of acoustic treatment i'm really partial to the gik acoustic stuff right now um they they make good stuff it's it's quality it's it's affordable um you can use whatever acoustic treatment you want it's really up to you for us we do so many of these projects we just need something that is consistent and we can rely on and that our customers can order efficiently um, and that's kind of our method of doing things and we we really keep to the sort of the home home studio model I'll, i sometimes do like full custom acoustic designs but honestly i'm moving away from that just because it takes so much time uh, both in the design and the build phase adds so much extra cost and labor it's so specialized so like just being able to buy panels i still think is one of the best ways to design a studio these days um, there's probably lots of people that'll give me flack about that but that's just kind of our methodology you know um, so we label all these acoustic panels over here so it's really easy to tell which one is which um, where to place them um, and you'll see in a set uh, in these section views uh, you can see exactly uh, the distances of where to place them so when i do my acoustic designs i'm really keeping in mind a, a balance between aesthetic and art and room acoustics so for these rooms we've got these custom uh uh, panels on the ceiling which are going to be really helpful for our axial modes and reducing some of the low end because we can get them to hang down and then in the listening position i really always want to get my direct reflections and i always want to have bass traps in all four corners if i can because those are some of the most effective ways to control the reflections and the um, absorption in your room then towards the back half of the room i always like to do diffusion and absorption mixed together and I've really been a fan of these uh, diffusive polycyndrical absorbers by GIK right now. I think they look cool. I love the way polycyndrical diffusers work. If you've ever read the Master Handbook of Acoustics, they're a big fan of them as well because polycyndrical diffusers can also absorb if you fill them with uh, some fiberglass insulation on the inside, which GIK does do. Um, so and it's just a beautiful aesthetic on this one We got the slat panels on the back wall to give both diffusion and a lot of absorption with their six inch slat panels on that back wall um, And we've also done that in the uh, drum room I don't do a lot of quadratic diffusion these days because they need more space to really bloom and and showcase their work plus quadratic diffusers don't have any absorption qualities so i'm in home studio designs i really like to lean more into the absorption because that's pretty much we're always trying to get more low end base absorption not less in most of our studio rooms um, so that's kind of shows you some of the philosophy so here's like a nice view of the live room the control room is actually bigger than the live room they could be flip-flopped um, but this client really wanted that and then you can see our polycentrical diffusers up top here which I really just love the look of those guys. Um, and then the the acoustics clouds are actually gonna be built um, by uh, Alex McVeigh, uh, ideally is shipping these down, but we also teach our, our clients how to build the acoustic clouds if they need to, um, but highly recommend buying from Alex McVeigh. It's a lot more affordable in the long run. Um, so you can see all of the acoustic panels. We're teaching you guys how to build them here um how to hang these panels and then the beautiful part finally 
you get to see the 3D renderings of the studio space. So in this section here, we're really showing the client and the designers, you know, uh, contractors, exactly how we want the finished room to look and given a, a feel for the space. And we do this with all of our clients, just really giving them an idea of, hey, when you finish the studio, like this is how you we expect it to look. Um, it's gonna be beautiful, it's gonna be amazing. Uh, it's gonna sound great. And the lighting is gonna be incredible too. I just love this live room here. Um, you can really see that uh, in these renderings here. So pretty amazing stuff. Um, I really love the look of this um, for sure. So definitely um, highly recommend uh, shooting for an awesome design like this. Yeah, really love the feel of this. A lot of times I won't put a lot of absorption on the front wall unless we really decide that we want it. Uh, the front wall, uh, keeping it somewhat you know live, it gives the room, the floor and the front wall, if you keep them live, it gives the room a bit more life and then you absorb everywhere else and that really controls the room uh, a lot. And then at the very end, we do a materials list for all of our clients. So this shows everything that you need um, in here. And uh, yeah, it's just really uh, keeps it simple for everybody, um, makes it so that in one set of plans, you have everything you possibly could need to build this. Um, and ideally there's less uh, communication between the client and our team um, when they're building and they kind of just have everything they need right on spot. So it's pretty, pretty amazing and incredible. All right, so I hope that was really uh, helpful and in and a way to see behind the scenes. I don't think many design firms just show their plans on the internet. Um, certainly that you can tell there's a ton of work and ideas and, and systems that go into this. Um, again, if you are DIYing this, definitely check out my free soundproofing workshop. It's a great place if you're starting off on this journey just to get an even stronger foundation of how to build you know soundproof rooms and especially home recording studios um, you can watch that right away at soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop uh, that's soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop and if you're interested in getting a set of plans like you've seen in this video and also in part one of this series and you know like hey that's the level of detail i'm after uh, certainly sign up for a free soundproof clarity call that's the best way to see if we're going to be a good fit working together and i just give you 30 minutes of my time talk about your project understand what you're going through and ideally help to see if we could work together or um, if maybe we're not a good fit and then i just try to send you on your way with the best information you can possibly have so to check that out just go to soundproofyourstudio.com and click on the i want some construction plans button and that'll take you to my calendly link where you can sign up right away and uh and chat with me uh, i love chatting with you guys it's always a pleasure um whether you reach out to me or not, or if we ever work together or not, I just appreciate that you watched this and that we found a way to share uh, this beautiful community of building soundproof acoustic rooms uh, all over the world. It's just really fun and awesome to teach you every week. Uh, so thank you all so much for being here. Again, my name is Wilson, and I will see you all next week, every Monday, new videos. So make sure to subscribe, like, listen to the podcast. I'll see you all guys later.